two real numbers are denoted by a and b. Write down expressions for the mean of the squares of a and b. So the mean of the squares, we've got the squares, a squared and b squared. The mean is if we add them together and divide by 2. And then secondly, the square of the mean. So here we add a and b together, divide by 2. That will give us the mean of a and b. And then we square it. Now prove that the mean of the squares of a and b is greater or equal to the square of the mean. I'm going to talk about a, a few ways to do this. Well, two in particular, but um, in one way I'm going to talk about some of the intricacies of it. Let's write down the statement that we want to prove. Right, now method one is to actually, although we should never start with a statement to prove itself, um, there are times when you can do that. We're going to, and I'll talk about that, but we're going to do something called jottings. Just play around with the statement and see if we can find something that is true. So I'm first of all going to times three by four. 2a squared plus 2b squared is going to be greater or equal to a plus b all squared. Because when I divide, it's, this is a plus b squared divided by 2 squared. So that's, I'm dividing by 4, essentially. OK, now I'll expand the brackets on the right. And then minus a squared, b squared, and 2ab. Now this looks an awful lot like what I had when I had a plus b all squared, except I've got a minus 2ab, so it's going to be a minus b all squared. And this is true. Now that's not quite a proof because we've only shown that we're going from left to right. Although in this case you can justify it to yourself using the if and only if relationship that it's going to go the other way as well. So we can start out by saying this if and only if if and only if it's going to apply but imply both ways it's not like we're doing something that only works one way like you know you've got to be careful when you start squaring and square rooting we've not actually done that we just times by two divided by or divided by four actually there's no problem in in, in then times them by four the opposite way so if you were in a rush in an exam i'd say that is actually um, a proof proof complete For our purposes in AS maths, I'd say let's um, be a little bit more careful though and prove the statement by going the opposite way. It's actually just going to be exactly the same now. So we're, we're going to start with a statement that we know is true. And then we're going to derive our statement, which is therefore also true. So we'll expand the bracket. So this is what I would recommend for an exam to do it like this. And I'm going to add a squared and b squared onto both sides and 2ab. Factorise out, sorry, factorise the right hand side. Divide through by 4. And dividing by 4 means we can put it back like that, as required. So yeah, this is what I'd recommend on the right, but the left is still OK. Let's look at an alternative way to this question. If you want to show that something is bigger than something else, so method two, what we could actually do is subtract them. So let's subtract what we think is the smaller one from the bigger one and show that we get something that is necessarily bigger than zero. Sorry, that bracket should have been around the whole thing. It is a nice approach and it avoids all this jottings sort of stuff. So this is going to equal, I'm going to put it over a common denominator, so 2a squared plus 2b squared over 4, this times top and bottom by 2, because I know now I'm going to get a squared plus b squared plus 2ab when I square the top divided by 4 on the bottom.
minus them all separately now because I bring them bring it all together into a single fraction four a squared plus b squared minus two a b and this is necessarily greater or equal to zero because it's a square divided by four and therefore a squared plus b squared over 2 must be greater or equal. So that's our second way of doing it. It's pretty nice. So we're given that this result is true, but now what does this mean about the variance of a set of data? So actually, the variance is precisely in general for two or more, it's the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. Normally write it like this. But because it's true, then the variance is necessarily going to be greater or equal to zero. And that's what this is looking for. In fact, it comes from the definition of the variance that it's got to be greater or equal to zero because it's, I'm just going to talk about it, it's um, your x values minus the mean, so your differences, and then you square all of these and you divide that by n. So you can see just from the definition of the variance that it's necessarily going to be non-negative. Um, and then you can actually expand all of this to get this form that we more commonly used. But, so in fact, that's itself a definite, that's a proof um, that it must be, that the result must be true. But in any case, this question is just trying to get us to link into statistics, um, and the result does mean that the variance is greater or equal to zero.